Hey everybody, this is Ross. In today's video, I wanna do a, a strawberry taste test for you guys. I wanna take a look at my strawberry plants and I wanna compare some varieties here that I'm growing in the Philadelphia area. And we finally, now that it's, it's June 4th today, we finally have our first substantial harvest of strawberries of the year. And this is my favorite variety. It's called Mar de Bois. It's a French variety. I'll link the, uh, the name down in the, in the comments or the description. But it is, uh, it's so impressive that I compare other varieties to this one. This is the standard. And it's not just for flavor. Uh, we'll talk about the flavor in a minute, but this is the tastiest strawberry I've ever had, uh, besides the Alpine strawberries. But uh, it's also incredibly productive. Out of my 180 days of frost-free days here in this climate, um, I harvest my Mar de Bois strawberries for 130 of those days. Because um, what it does is, it actually puts out a really nice crop of strawberries in June, like a June bear would. But it's an ever-bearing type, it's not a June bear, right? A June bearing strawberry would produce in June through July or the beginning of July, maybe like three to four weeks, and then it would stop. And it would uh, not really do anything for you the rest of the season. The Mar de Bois does that, puts out a big crop in June, um, and then it stops for about three weeks. And then it continues after that three weeks all the way till frost of producing very consistently tasty strawberries. Um, again, for the basically what feels like the entire year. I, I get so many Mar de Bois strawberries that I get tired of picking them. Um, last year I couldn't keep up with the production. Um, I couldn't eat them all. I had less people to feed so I decided that I was going to freeze them and make them in the jam and I I didn't I took me a while to make the jam. I ended up defrosting them and then never really getting around to it. It was really just a a big mess of strawberries. Um, so what I'm going to do now actually is I'm going to eat a number of these. My parents are going to get some, my brother's going to get some. Uh, maybe I'll give a couple of these away, but probably most of them in this beginning stage here I'm going to freeze. Or I'm not going to freeze. I'm going to turn it into jam. And the reason for that, I want to make a, an exclusively Mar de Bois strawberry jam because if you were to eat these, we'll, we'll talk about the flavor in just a minute because I want to compare two other varieties here that I'm growing. But if I were to eat one of these and it's, you know, basically perfectly ripe, some of them are still what I would consider store-bought strawberry ripeness in that the, uh, the commercial growers who put these in the grocery stores for you guys, they they don't pick them at the right time. They pick them a little bit early when they're uh, very firm. They don't have the color that you're looking for. And of course, they don't have the flavor because if they're not picked at the right time, they're just not going to have the sugar content and therefore also the flavor. With all fruits, it's the same thing. Strawberries are one of those fruits that are so soft that it, you can't really ship it unless it's firm. So what I recommend is you guys grow them because it's a night and day difference between a homegrown strawberry and one at the store but it's even more of a night and day difference between this strawberry and a homegrown strawberry and the reason for that is that this is not just a tasty one because when i eat this it's as if the strawberry was injected with some grape juice like welch's conquered grape grape juice so it's an, it's just got a great flavor but it's also really soft. This is a very soft strawberry. And a lot of them we get at the store have been bred for firmness. So they're very firm and they don't melt in your mouth nearly as easily as this. This, I don't even have to chew. Wow. Yeah, it's on another level, guys. You, you can basically crush it just with your mouth and not with your teeth. You could basically, with your tongue in the roof of your mouth, you could just crush it. It's like eating chocolate. It's so smooth, it's so good. But you know what, I, even though I love this one so much, maybe I'm crazy, but there could be something better out there, right? 
there could be something better out there. So I've grown a number of varieties in the past now. And um, I used to grow, I still am growing it. It's called Early Glow. And I planted some underneath my apples and underneath my grapevines over there. We had a really big patch actually over there by the pears and the, uh, the apricots and the plums. Uh, but we've been moving things around. I planted raspberries over there and, you know, I've been doing different things in construction and, and that bed isn't just looking so great this year. So there's not as many early glow plants or strawberries to speak of this year. In fact, I'm sort of debating whether or not I should get rid of it entirely, the, the variety entirely. Because as I've said, these Mara de Bois strawberries that I've harvested today are just blowing them out of the water. It's, uh, the early glow is quite early, but uh, Mara de Bois is right there. I mean, it's not like the early glow, because it's called early, does it mean that it puts it way ahead of other strawberries? It really isn't that much earlier, maybe a week. Um, it's a good strawberry in its own right, and it reminds me a lot of like your standard strawberry flavor. It's a great strawberry for anybody out there who wants to grow just a great tasting strawberry. I mean, that's the one, right? It's a good, firm, over, overall producer, always reliable. Because it's firm, it doesn't guess necessarily get as many uh, you know, marks within it. You know, because these strawberries, the Mar de Bois, are actually so soft, they're more susceptible to different things, I find. Um, you know, they're just a, just a tougher plant, a tougher variety, I would say. Um, and overall, I think for your money, it's totally worth it. But again, it only produces once a year. Yeah, it produces quite heavily. So does Mar de Bois. It produces almost as heavily as the Early Glow. Um, and then if you compound how much you get over the year, it's crazy. So the early glow I think is out. For the time being, I don't see a, uh, a great use case for it. But over here I've actually planted, um, this is Rutgers Scarlet right here. This is a variety that was bred by Rutgers. And I know a lot of people in the Northeast are really kind of uh, they really appreciate what Rutgers has done um, in terms of their breeding programs, specifically their tomatoes. People love those things. But so I, I value and I respect Rutgers and I, I wanted to try to get this strawberry because it was getting not just, you know, a great overall sense uh, about it, but it was getting good taste reviews. And as a result, I thought, well, if it tastes really good, Maybe we can get one here that can compete with the Mara de Bois in terms of flavor. And although it is a June bear, which produces only in June, maybe the flavor is better and maybe it's enough to eventually replace Early Glow or even replace Mara de Bois. That was my thought process. And so far, the answer is no. It's not going to replace Mara de Bois. It tastes a lot like a standard strawberry with some good acidity in it. However, it is really good. And I put it actually a notch above Early Glow, but a little below the Mar de Bois. The Mar de Bois has such an interesting flavor, like an Alpine strawberry. It's hard to ever beat that, I think. But this is actually quite acidic. So it has a really nice acid balance. And I would wager, if you could do something with these strawberries in terms of processing them, not necessarily maybe for jam, but maybe for like a pie or pastries or something of that sense, like a baked good, I would probably go with these because of that acidity. Um, not that the Mar de Bois doesn't have the acidity, because if you pick them a little bit earlier when they're not as ripe, I think the acidity is still there. Yeah, it's just not as there. It's just not there as much. So, you know, if you really want something acidic that, that really comes through, I recommend the, the Rucker Scarlet. Now, 
I do have another variety I want to show you. It's called the Purple Wonder from Burpee. And that one was bred by Cornell. And um, again, another great breeding program. Maybe it has the potential to replace the Moire de Bois. And the reason I say that, the reason I'm actually really hopeful for it is because it is a purple strawberry. Legitimately such a dark red that it's almost purple. And uh, we're gonna find out. It's not ready yet, just yet. But in a couple days it'll be ripe. I'm gonna edit this video and you'll see what our reviews are. All right, everybody. So we're now actually a couple weeks after we did our first comparison of the Mar de Bois strawberries and the Rucker Scarlet. Now I have some purple wonders here that I wanna go over with you guys. Uh, we've actually been over the last couple weeks doing a direct comparison, multiple times I've done a direct comparison between the three strawberries. And I have to say that uh, my original thoughts changed a bit. The Rucker Scarlet is a lot better than I had thought. Um, there are some strawberries, if you can really get them perfect, and I don't think it's really that difficult to get them perfect because they are a more firm strawberry that doesn't seem to really be subject to disease and other things kind of attacking it. Um, it seems to be, you know, stands up more to the elements, you could say. And because of that, uh, if you get it perfectly ripe, it is quite good. It's really good, actually, and I would argue uh, it's still below the Mar de Bois, but uh, for all the other strawberries I've ever tried, it's number two. And uh, it's a clear number two. So for me, I'm going to be propagating and spreading these Rucker Scarlet plants around the yard. And that's my, my goal here is to put them in different places. And actually, I'm going to be taking out the early glows. And then I'm also really strongly considering taking out this Purple Wonder because the Purple Wonder really has not been impressing me at all. In fact, I have some berries here that I'll show you that just are not even purple. Um, they are a dark red, so don't get me wrong. Maybe the camera can sort of pick these up. I do have them in the sun to kind of demonstrate this. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus. There we go. So they are, you know, quite a red strawberry and a dark red at that and I think because they're so dark red that's when you start to get the the hints of purple in there but I'm gonna be honest with you it's it just really isn't um, purple it's just not and I, I think maybe in another yard maybe in another climate maybe in full Sun maybe with more Sun along these plants because they are a bit shaded I would see that coloration maybe with different nutrients like potassium I may uh, start to see a different skin color um, but I'm just not I'm not here and I think maybe it's either that it's just not purple maybe there's a nutrient problem or um, it's mislabeled so either they're lying to us or there's a nutrient problem or they're uh, you know as I said or it's mislabeled so let's um Let's try this now because historically over the last couple weeks and I've been doing the direct comparisons, it just hasn't lived up to what I thought it would. Oh. Oh, okay. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's actually really good. Wow. All right, well, man. Here's some others that are not as ripe. Well, it's a lot better than I had originally thought. And I think the issue I'm running into, I guess, actually, even having said all of that prior, where there's those three different scenarios, I think I'm just not picking them when they're perfectly ripe. That's all it is. Uh, they'll turn red, and it looks like they're ripe. But if they're red and they're a lighter red, they're kind of watery and almost tasteless. Then if they turn that dark red like I just ate, they're actually quite good and I imagine maybe if I can even let them ripen for another day um, they'll get that purple color and they'll probably be even tastier than what I just had but that was quite complex and I really am impressed by that strawberry I still would not put it above Mar de Bois but I guess I need more 
more time with it, more opinions, because that was, uh, that was actually really good. Um, that may even be the best strawberry I had today, and I had a lot of Mara de Bois today. So, interesting, but yeah, the Rucker Scarlet's right here, and the Mara de Bois over there, and I'm gonna definitely be trying to get as many of these in different locations, I think, at the yard. Uh, because I do value, maybe I mentioned this in the, the first half of the video about having June bearing strawberries and how you don't have to pick them all year. You just pick them all once in, in June and you're good. So I do want some more June bearers around the, around the yard. Excuse me, guys. And, uh, yeah, I think those two are actually are really quite something. I'm, I'm impressed. They it definitely, both of them beat early glow in terms of flavor. And, uh, yeah. Maybe I'll even keep Early Glow, I guess, because if Early Glow is much earlier than the other three varieties I'm growing, then it might just have, you know, a spot here permanently. I don't know, but pretty cool. So, yeah, thank you guys here for watching this one. If you enjoyed it, check us out on Facebook, Instagram. Subscribe, guys, and check out our blog, figboss.com. We'll see everybody soon. Take care.